welcome back to Pro Tour Philadelphia. It's modern time once again. I'm in the company of Mr. Tom Dixon from New York at Top Deck Games. Uh, great to have you here. Now, how long have you been playing Magic? I started around Alpha with a bunch of friends. Uh, I was very young, I was like 12 years old. I went to the card shop, the guy had a Magic deck and started me on it. And I've been playing ever since, been hooked. Okay, and number of Pro Tours in that time? Uh, this is my first. Okay, have you, uh, are you a PTQ veteran and just finally got over the hump or what? No, no, actually, um, I just got here off my uh, rating. They okay. uh, invited me and I thought it would be a great idea to come down. It's pretty local, so it wasn't okay. a far trip. And so I you came just, on down. just opened the inbox and there it said, congratulations, <laughs> you're good at magic, come and be good at magic. And that was the plan. That's going to be quite a nice <laughs> yeah. idea. Okay, now all sorts of decks you can play in modern. Tom's decided to go with Jund. Black, red, green, called Jund, if you don't remember, from the Shards of Alara block, one of the five uh, different sort of triangles um, of mana. So let's take a look at the deck, and we're going to start up at the top here with a nice straightforward suite of four copies of four creatures. We begin at one Curdate. How often is this a 1-1 one, one for you? Never. <laughs> it's always a 2-3. Yep, so it says 1-1, one, one, but plus 1, plus 2, as long as you control a forest, and that's pretty much always. Mm -hmm. Next across, one of the all-time great cards, Tarmogoyf, the star, the 1 plus star. How often is that an, a naught one Oh, uh, very rarely, but it does happen <laughs> on occasion. Okay, again. <laughs> then we get one of the most iconic cards ever printed, Dark Confident, Bob Marr Jr., his Invitational card. Um, now, have you done the math on just what kind of numbers you, you lose at the beginning of your upkeep? What's, what's the kind of average mana in um, the deck? Well, the average mana is around uh, 1.6. Okay. I did the math, yep. uh, including the mana base. Sure. Um, the, the heavy hitter is going to be the Bloodbraid Elf or the Kitchen Finks or the Blightning. But for the most part, you're going to flip 0, 1, or 2. Okay. And I would definitely take that wager every day. The reason why I'm, I started with John was because of Dark Confidant. All right. And then we have Kitchen Finks. Now, this is a card that's seen playing quite a bunch of different decks. There are kind of rock decks. There are out-and-out -out, uh, sort of persist combo uh, decks with Malira Lira. and so on. Um, but you've got it here, I guess, as a kind of really just a fairly grindy mid-range let's not die to some hideously fast aggro thing. Exactly. Yep. It, it was um, put into deal with Zoo. Uh, the original iteration of the deck actually had Goblin Guides here where Curd Ape was. Okay. And I felt that was giving 12 posts too many lands, and I was in. Sure. It wasn't enough for the haste. And then I cut it for Grim Lava Mancer, but that had neg negative synergy with the Tarmogoyfs and the Punishing Fires. Mm -hmm. So I cut Lava Mancer for Curd Ape, and it was the best decision I made. It's, it, Curd Ape has been amazing for me all the weekend. Okay. 4, 8, 12, 16. Now here's 17 to 20. It's Blood Braid Elf. If you've missed out on this little lady, <laughs> well, you're in for a bit of a treat. Here's Cascade, and of course what Cascade does, it lets you flip cards over and over until you find something that costs less, and that's going to be pretty much anything. So card advantage on a stick has haste, one of the real iconic cards of the last three, four years. Of course, yeah. It's, it's definitely one of the best cards in Jund or Zoo, which are the two decks that are playing it. Um, it's inherently a two-for-one no matter what, and you can get exponential. If you hit like a Blightning, it's it's a lightning bolt, it's discard two, it's a three two haste, it's an amazing card. Um, one of the best things about it too that a lot of people didn't realize is that it's also tutors for my punishing fires pretty well. It goes through my deck quickly and one of the situations I like to be in because I'm playing a grinded out kind of deck yep. is Grove of the Burn Willows and Punishing Fire. Okay, so let's take a look at that. Here is Punishing Fire and Grove of the Burn Willows. So just for people who haven't seen this, because this is what Brian Kibler used to w win Pro Tour Austin in 2009, explain the interaction between these two cards for us. All right, well, uh, Punishing Fire is a fairly fair card on the uh, when you first look at it. Mm -hmm. It's uh, two mana for two damage to target creature or player. So that seems pretty fair. You know, you would think Lightning Bolt, Shock, those kind of things are either cheaper or do more damage. The kicker about Punishing Fire is that if an opponent would gain life, you could pay a red mana to return it to your hand. Mm -hmm. So it becomes an engine with Grove of the Burn Willows, because whenever you tap Grove of the Burn Willows for red mana, your opponent gains one life. So in essence, what you can do is tap your Grove of the Burn Willows to return Punishing Fire to your hand. And this replicates for each additional copy that you have in your graveyard. So the more Punishing Fires or the more Grove of the Burn Willows you have, the more times you can deal two damage to a creature or player. So they gain one. So they go up to six, let's say, but you've got Punishing Fire back, Punishing Fire them, 
put them to four. Right. You tap another grove of the burn willows, put them back up to five. You get punishing five back. You punish them again. They're down to three. So there's an engine. That's what we call it. Anytime you can go round and round with a thing in magic, we call that an engine. So you've got punishing fire and grove of the burn willows. Now you've also got in the kind of I tell you what, why don't we put your stuff in the bin or occasionally you in the bin? <laughs> four very lovely, may I say, lightning bolts. Thank you, re you. you really like to go to town with the deck. It's a it's a very pretty deck. You've I built. try, yeah. Yeah. So as you can see, the beautiful foil, full art, can't beat those, very, very nice. And then on the other side of the Punishing Fires, you've got three Terminate, three, why not four? Where's the fourth? Um, well, it comes down to numbers. Um, if I was going to play a fourth Terminate, I would have to cut another card or cut a land, and those things aren't something I'm willing to do. I'm at 22 lands and I can't go lower, and I really can't afford to cut any of the creatures. If it was going to be a fourth Terminate, it would be a Kitchen Finks that would go, but in reality, Kitchen Finks will block most of the things I need to kill with Terminate, and it will come back and gain me more life to keep me in the game. Um, Terminate actually wasn't even in the deck until last night. It was Maelstrom Pulse, but I felt like I needed the instant speed on Terminate to deal with um, Deceiver Exarch, which is one of the hard problems for my, my deck game one. Uh, against Blue-Red, um, their Pester Mites and Kiki Jikis will die to my regular removal spells, sure. but their Deceiver Exarch is a 1-4, and they do play a suite of counter magic to protect it. So I have to be able to deal with it in ways that doesn't involve two burn spells or three burn spells, mm -hmm. and the way that I do that is with Terminate. I try to bait, the, I bait out a counter with Terminate. If they tap out for the counter, then I know I have to go two burn spells, and that's when Grove of the Burn Wheels Punishing Fires is amazing, because I can pay two mana for Punishing Fire, tap the Burr of the Burn Willows, pick it back up, pay two mana, and do it again. Okay, and then the last sort of aspect of the deck, you've got your three Blightnings, your four Thoughtseize, so this is your disruption package, making them discard, also get a bit of burn in as well. Uh, so that's your kind of package as a whole. Let's take a look at the deck. When we uh, just get down to the bottom here, you can see the mana base, you've got your Grove of the Burn Willows, Blood Prit, Stomping Ground coming around, the Red Green, Jewel Land, Rob Alexander again, Verdant Catacombs, your Overgrown Tombs, and some very nice full art basic lands uh, to round out the deck. So, if it turns out that you want to play something that isn't dedicated combo, that isn't your zoo deck, that isn't trying to kill you on turn two, but that still does a lot of very unfair things, you could do a lot worse than Jund. And Tom Dixon's been doing the business with Jund on day one, and he's doing the business again on day two. Let's see how it goes as we head down the stretch in modern. For Tom Dixon, I'm your host, Rich Hagen, saying bye.